guys so this video is going to be about the attachments so I'm going to start with the legs and I will always start these videos with um, the examples from my drawing so mine are going to look something like this so I'll show you how to make that tapered coil and these little toenails um, and I realize that that might not apply to your assignment but the process is still the same basically these attachments for your little alien monster critters are you're taking a chunk of clay you're just shaping it to whatever it is you want it to look like and then if it gets too thick then we'll hollow it out um, and then you just go about the proper attachment process so um i will go over multiple different types of attachments so just be patient as we go through this and you'll just kind of have to ebb and flow with me right so if this video doesn't apply to you then um, stay tuned for the next one because I think I'm going to do them in short segments um, for each attachment rather than just one long one because I think that'll be a little bit better for you guys um, but remember I am not going to edit them because that will take way too long and I'd rather be working in clay and getting these up for for you guys to view so you may have to kind of fast forward and rewind and that sort of thing to get the information that you need that is going to be applied to your clay form. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was a lot of you guys had your critters standing and I think you're gonna run into a lot of issues with that because I'm not there to kind of help you and assist with the balance of it. So sometimes a lot of physics plays a part and I don't wanna teach how to build an armature or anything like that because I don't know what resources you guys have at home. Um, so we're just gonna kind of bypass that. So if you have your little critter standing, we're gonna kind of switch gears and we're gonna have them all just sitting. Unless you wanna go for it, more power to you, that's perfectly fine. Um, but you are gonna have to make sure that it's propped up some way. Um, and I'll talk briefly about that, but I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. So if that's not kind of a path you wanna go down, I'm perfectly fine with you just having your um, form sitting, which is what I'm gonna do, because I think that's what most of you are going, probably pretty likely to kind of transition transition into. Um, the other thing is if you have a certain kind of attachment and it's just not going well and you're like, oh, but I really like Miss Rusha. She explained it really well. It was really thorough and I get it. Then just apply that to your um, critter. It'll be perfectly fine. We just kind of kind of go with the flow here. So um, again, if you have particular questions that I'm not addressing, please send me an email or make a comment um, in the video and below and I will um, try to address it. So let me readdress the camera so we can kind of get to this first attachment. I switched the angle of the camera because I had it vertical, so I'm going horizontal this time to see what it does. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a leg like this. And notice I have my base form under plastic because I'm not working with it and I don't want it to dry out any further than it already has. So I'm gonna keep it under plastic. I've got my extra clay under plastic and I've got, I just grabbed like a chunk of clay. It's probably too much, but I always like to start with a little bit more than I need. You can always cut it off later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a tapered coil and I've already talked about this in class so you should know what that is, but if not, I'll still walk through the process. Make sure that you're wedging your clay. So with this amount of clay, you can just hand wedge it. Um, but I've already done that, so I'm gonna go straight into my coil. So remember, it's squeeze and rotate, squeeze and rotate. Just rotating just slightly. And, you know, we're gonna smooth out these cracks as we go. I got Amy and Winehouse on now. It was Nora Jones. It's like that jazzy kind of music, you know, where their heart and their soul is in their voice. I'm gonna cut this off a little bit because I know it's gonna be too much. The other thing, guys, is you probably, you wanna make sure that this is accessible. So that's why I just kind of draped my bag over it um, because I'm gonna wanna reference the size. tapered coil, thicker at one end, thinner at the other. So I think that looks pretty good. 
And I have him sitting apparently now, so I don't know that he has that long of legs, but I'm gonna leave it this length so that way I can use this for a part of the attachment. So I think I do that pretty often. Like I leave the attachment piece or the leg area longer than I need it because I could always cut it off if it does get too long. And I'm just gonna go back through and I'm just gonna kind of compress my clay. I'm gonna roll it a little bit. I don't do too much rolling because I think it shakes the camera. And just in regards to thickness, um, you know, an inch, inch and a half in regards to thickness. Remember I told you, you can use your thumb as a reference. Um, but if it gets over, you know, an inch and a half to two inches in regards to thickness of the clay, that's too thick and you run the risk of stuff exploding um, in the kiln and we do not want that for you. So we'll talk about hollowing stuff out here in a little while. I'm not gonna do that right now because I think you'll get too overwhelmed. So, my leg. Push it back a little bit. So I don't want them to have really long legs. Okay. So I think that'll work. So once I have one made, before I attach it, I like to make the second one. So if you have two of something, I like to make them at the same time to see if they're about the same. This one's a little bit thinner than this one. Um, so I'm going to thin this one out a little bit more since I already have more clay on it. It'd be silly to, so I'd have to remake that one totally, but this one I can thin out. So I'm going to keep rolling. Maybe I'm going to squeeze this a little bit. too far. That's okay. I'll build it up later. That'll work. All right. So now what I'm going to do is because I want the bottom of my coils to be flat because I wanted to represent the bottom of my little guy's feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to tap it on my board here. And the nice thing about doing this is it gives you kind of this natural Kind of push of the clay where it comes out a little bit which i would have done anyway gives it kind of like a little paw look and if you want to accentuate that so this one did really well so it kind of pushed it out right here like the front of a paw if you want to accentuate that a little bit more and have it come out even further what you can do is you can take some clay and i can do this i'll just do this to mine that way you can see it Take some clay. This is that additive process I was talking about. So I'm adding clay to my existing clay. So I'm gonna build it out. I don't think I want it to go all the way around. So I'm just going to kind of tear that right there. Again, like I just told you, I like to make both pieces at the same time. So that way they're basically the same. It's okay if they're a little bit off. I mean, that's normal. It's more real. That's good. So, connect it on this side. Don't worry if those coils crack like this because we're going to smooth them out anyway. Okay, so that's going to be that additive process. I'm going to extend my toe area of my foot here. So before we attach this, remember wherever two pieces of clay touch, you're going to add clay. So I'm going to add a little bit of clay right here. I mean, sorry, slip. I don't need quite that much. I really need to add some water to this. My slip's getting a little bit too dry. This would be great slip for a slip trailing. 
which we have not talked about, but if you're in ceramics too, we've talked about it. So I'm just gonna score this area. Again, you guys are gonna use your modeling tool for scoring. So score both pieces wherever it's touching. Remember your score marks need to be nice and close together. I've got my little feet. Remember, you can kind of check it, see if it falls off. So when you have little tiny pieces like this, sometimes I use my fingertips, but a lot of times I'll use my modeling tool. And this is the one that I usually use, but it's, I gotta break my habit of picking that one up because that's for a different type of clay. I need to probably move it off this board. But I'm gonna pull half that coil. Don't pull all of it because we want it to stick out because we want it to represent that toe area. So I'm just pulling that clay, kind of like you did when you attached your coil to your pinch pots. Just dragging that clay back. It's kind of like pulling with your thumb, but you're pulling with your modeling tool. It's gonna go all the way around, trying to grab, you know, the same amount through the whole thing, keeping it as even as I can when I do this. And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom. So pull that clay. Now I'll just go back through and I'm gonna smooth this out. And then I'm gonna compress this side right here with my fingertip. I'm not gonna use my rib on the, well I might, I don't know. I'm gonna, probably not. I probably won't use my rib though because it's too small of an area, but I will use my sponge. You could use your paintbrush if you wanted to. And I'm gonna tap this down on my board. But you can see now I've got like that extended toe area and it looks like it's part of the leg. So anytime you're smooth something like this, you, know, you gotta be careful because that's fresh clay, it's super soft. Take some time, don't rush through this. Make sure it's nice and smooth. We can't see that attachment point. There we go. So now while we're working on this one, this one will set up a little bit and then we'll do the toenails. So we'll just kind of put that one off to the side, cover my base form so it doesn't dry out on me. And then do the same thing to this side. My hands get really cold when I work with clay. So I always keep a hot uh, bucket of water next to me. So that way if they get, you'll probably see this over the next couple days, but that way if they get really cold, I can just stick them in that little bucket and warm them up. I have a heater right next to me too, but you guys know how hot my classroom is. But my studio is very cold. It's a big space, because it's just in my basement. My husband was tired of having our kitchen turned into a ceramic studio, so he finished our basement and, um, you know, we set it up and now it's my studio. It's very cool. Nothing fancy. You can see behind me, I don't even have the walls painted. Maybe one day. You don't need a fancy place to do work. Amazing artwork can happen anywhere. I'm just gonna keep smoothing. Just 
just like I always tell you in class, you cannot over compress your clay, guys. If you compress your clay properly, then you're going to hopefully not get any cracks in your art form. But you know, that's kind of always something that could potentially happen with ceramics. You always gotta say a little prayer when it goes into the kiln because you just, you just never know what's gonna happen in there. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of check these. Let's see, they're pretty close. In the summertime when I need something to dry quickly, need to set up quickly, I'll put it outside on my patio while I work on something else. It has to do with the art form. Okay, so that was a real quick kind of demo on, you know, adding that additive process. And I'm not gonna do any subtractive processes because I want it to stick out like that. So now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to make some little toenails. So I'm just gonna set these aside. I'm not gonna cover them because I want these to set up. So those are gonna stay out while I build this other part. So I'm gonna create these little toenails right here. And yes, I'm gonna do them individually. And yes, it might be a little time consuming, but it'll look really cool when I'm done. So I gotta kind of keep my foot or my leg next to me so I can kind of reference. I mean, you can make these whatever size you want. Maybe you want them to be really, really big. Um, maybe you want them to be really, really small. But I just made a ball of clay and then I turned it into a tapered coil. So it, it's nothing that you haven't already learned. It's just a smaller version, that's it. So I use the same technique to make this little piece that I use to make this leg. It's a tapered coil, that's all, of, that's all it is. But I know that this is just gonna be a little bit too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna roll this out a little bit more. And you can do this in the palm of your hand or you can do it on your board, whichever works for you. And I know that's gonna be a little bit too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. Now, if you're gonna do any kind of toenails, leave them longer than you anticipate needing them. So when you put it next to your leg, like this, like that's gonna be too long. I don't want them that long but I'm gonna leave it this link because of the attachment process that I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna stop this video because I'm gonna make a bunch of these and I don't think you really need to watch that. So I'm gonna make probably a dozen of them. And while I'm doing that, you guys can be working on your leg attachment and building that if you're going this route. If not, if you're doing like tentacles, you're still gonna make a tapered coil. So it's gonna be thick at one end, then at the other. So you can still work on that process and then I will show you how to attach tentacles um, or spider legs. Um, that should pretty much cover what most of you guys have. If you have something completely different, please send me an email and I will um, make those adjustments for you, okay? Um, if you're like, yeah, I like the stuff that other people are doing or what she just showed us, then just do it, it's okay. We can make adjustments on your, your drawing. It's not a big deal. We're gonna be really flexible as we go through this. So this will be the first video, make those tapered coils for your legs or your tentacles um, or your spider legs. And then the next video will be, how do you actually apply this to the base form? So stay tuned.